stories that matter. The journey of life from birth to death is an extraordinary trip, sometimes filled with great joy and excitement, but at other times filled with pain, sorrow, and disappointment. Stories That Matter shares both extremes with you. Sometimes our stories will make you feel very happy, but the journey of life is not all happiness. Other times, the journey of life will make you feel sad, for all of us have experienced both extremes. Stories That Matter will begin right after the break with a story that will touch your heart in the journey of life. Welcome to Stories That Matter. I'm your host, Doug Thompson, with my special guest today, Chad Young from Salina. And actually in Salina, you run the Salina Rescue Mission, don't you? Yes, sir, I sure do. Your uh, title is Executive Director. Yes, sir. Tell me about the Salina Rescue Mission. Well, the Salina Rescue Mission is traditionally thought of as a men's homeless shelter, but we're trying to help people awaken that we're so much more than that. We really see ourselves as a life transformation center because that's what we're really geared towards, helping a man who's, who's probably homeless, he's been struggling with drugs and alcohol, or maybe he's not been having those struggles, but struggling uh, with work, struggling with family issues, struggling with health or mental health issues, and trying to get them back on their own two feet. That's what all of our programs are focused on, is not just how do we help someone uh, by giving them a meal and a, and a bed to sleep in, but how can we really help make a meaningful impact and help them to change their lives? Yeah, and how do you go about doing that? Well, we have three programs that we offer. Our first is our guest employment program. The guest employment program is the way that the majority of the men who come to the mission enter into. These are guys who come in saying, hey, I, I need to get a job, save money, and then go out and get my own place to live. And so the guest employment program will help them through that whole process. Uh, some, some guys will struggle with having a resume, we'll help them develop a resume. We'll help them learning good interview skills. We'll help them make sure that they have proper clothes for a, for a good interview. And then of course we, we give them some pointers as to where they can go to, to apply for jobs. And we also work with the Kansas Employment Center and help them to connect there so that they can uh, apply for jobs online as well. Uh, once a guy gets a job, then we start working on financial counseling and teaching the guys how to build a budget, but also how to stick to a budget. Because I don't know about you, but I've written 100 budgets for myself before I learned to follow one budget. Yeah, I, I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. Well, let me be sure that I'm clear on this point here, because the, what, what changes people's lives, what I see is those people who, um, like all of us, have gone from nowhere to getting to know the Lord. Yes. Does the program st structured to help those people in that transition? Absolutely. What, no matter which program you go into, we believe that the real healing we all need is in our relationship with our Heavenly Father. Uh, Jesus Christ saved my life. He, he changed me when I could not change myself. When I struggled with drugs and alcohol in my own life, I tried many things to get my life on track. It wasn't until I gave my life to the Lord that the Lord started changing me and teaching me how to live. And so ultimately, the, the best life transformation that happens isn't necessarily the job, okay, or learning financial counseling, sure. but it's that walk with the Lord. And so as the guys are going through, no matter which program we have to offer, we're sharing with them about the love of God, reassuring them that no matter what you've done, Jesus Christ paid the price for your sins on the cross. And you can know without a doubt, your sins have been forgiven if you'll just receive it. A lot of Bible studies, Yes, we do Bible studies there. We have chapel service every night at 6 p.m. We do a devotion every morning with the men. We also have a Bible study going on every Thursday nights. It's open to ev all the guys in the shelter. Uh, and then uh, one of our, our feature programs, what, what we would say is our flagship program, one that if we had the opportunity to, every guy would go through, is our new life program. And that is a biblical-based 
discipleship program to help guys who really want to learn how to live for Christ. And so it's a long program. It takes anywhere from 12 to 18 months for a guy to go through that program. Uh, all of the life transformation things don't happen in the blink of an eye uh, as far as learning how to live. And so we have to work through some of those issues and learn along the way. And so the, the whole New Life program is a program that first focuses on coming to your relationship with Christ, accepting God as your Father. What does it mean uh, to accept biblical authority in your life? Uh, how can you trust the Word of God? And we work on those foundational issues. As the Word's Lord says, uh, unless the Lord builds a house, the laborers build in vain. So we start with that foundation. Then we start working on our identity. I used to be an alcoholic and drug addict. Today, I'm the son of God. And so we have to make that transition from the old to the new. And we have to learn to start putting off the old, as it says in Ephesians 4, put off the old and start putting on the new creation that God has made us into. Then the next portion of the program is saying, okay, I understand I'm a sinner saved by grace. And sometimes I'm still going to sin. Sometimes I'm still going to fall short. So how do we continue on in life when we continue to fall short? Or how can I have a healthy relationship with you if sometimes I fall short and sometimes you fall short? How do we have a healthy relationship? And, and you are right. And I want the people that are watching this show to concentrate on that because we're going to cut away to break. We're going to be back and we're going to answer that question. Welcome back to Stories That Matter. I'm your host, Doug Thompson, with my special guest, Chad Young. And Chad's the executive director at Salina Rescue Mission in Salina. The contact information for Chad is on the screen right now. You take a look at that, because if you want to help out, and Chad, here, here's something most people don't know. You're not funded by tax dollars. Yours is contributions only, right? That's right. We, we, rely, we say God's our fundraiser, because God moves in the people's hearts and causes them to be generous to meet the needs and help other people in need. And, and so we don't accept any uh, tax money, nothing from the federal, state, or local government. We depend completely on the free will giving of people in the community. Yeah, and that's awesome. So as you look at that contact information, we'll put it back up on the screen at different times and at the end of the show we'll put it on. But it's $10 here, it's $20 here, it's whatever you have that you can help out with it will make the difference to keep this keep this going. And and Chad, if I talk about this a little bit, there's not a lot of shelters around from where you are to the western Kansas. You're, you guys are pretty much it. That's right. From uh, west of Junction City all the way to Denver, Colorado. Wow. We are the only men's shelter between here and there. And then uh, from the northern half of the state, uh, north of McPherson, all the way till you get to Nebraska, there's no other men's shelter. And so it's common for us to see uh, some of our smaller communities from those areas uh, send their homeless to us at, at Salina. Uh, of course, there's some people we can help and some people we can't, it, it depends on their situation and circumstances, but whatever it is, people need to realize this isn't a flop house. This isn't somewhere where you just show up and get a mat every day. We expect people to be working on rebuilding their lives and preferably with Christ at the center. Yeah, C accountability is the key to the program. Absolutely, ba boundaries, accountabilities, rules all help me to fulfill what I'm supposed to fulfill in life, yeah. yeah. And you have, what, 76 beds? We have 76 beds. Uh, we probably have about 71 guys at the mission tonight. Uh, there's been times where we've had as many as 100 guys at the mission. And when we run out of beds, our heart's desire is not to turn people away. Uh, we want to show them all the love of Christ. And so we'll pick up our tables and chairs from our dining room and we'll put down mats on the floor to make sure that we are able to uh, give everybody an opportunity. And that's awesome. 
Uh, because as we were talking about on break, many times what you encounter is when the person comes to you, that person has the terms you and I would use in our own lives with the Lord, has surrendered. Yes. I've given it up. I've turned it over to the Lord. And that's when, that's when you then start back up. You agree with me? Absolutely. Yeah, and so in their situation, when they come to, to see you, they may not have surrendered to the Lord yet, mm -hmm. but they're there because I have no place to go. Yep. and it's cold, and I'm hungry, and I don't want to get into trouble by stealing something or, or doing something else, and they really need a hand, and they get their hand held out. To, Can I come in? You know, and, yes. and they don't know the answer to that because, you know, the scary part about this is that as you get ready to feed people, and how, how do you know you have enough food? How do you provide for all these people? Because you don't have steady funding coming in the, from right. the government that says every, every month we will give you this, whether it's state, local, federal, uh, and you don't have it. And do you have trouble sometimes sleeping at night, Chad, saying, <laughs> man, I, uh, you know, how are we going to feed everybody? Because you do how many meals a day? We do three meals a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And our meals aren't just for the men who stay at the shelter. Our feeding program's open to anybody in the community who needs a meal. And so it's very common to see women, children, families from the community who are just struggling to make ends meet wow. come to us for meals. Uh, we serve uh, around 43,000 meals this past year, and I'm sure we're gonna serve more than that this year. And that's tremendous. How, 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 do, you, how do you do that? If it weren't, for people helping us out, we wouldn't be able to do it. Whether it's people donating food at a food drive, a rancher who donates a, a cow for beef, uh, all of these things come into play. And we couldn't do it without volunteers. Volunteers make everything work. We only have one paid staff person overseeing our kitchen. Think about that. It's open seven days a week, for three meals a day, so 365 days a year. If it wasn't for the volunteers that come in and help us, we wouldn't be able to do it. Wow. Do the, do the men that are in the program, do they help out with what we would call KP from my Abs army days? Yes, absolutely. So there's responsibilities we all have in life. We all have responsibilities in the place we're living. Uh, if my wife brings home groceries, guess what? It's my responsibility to go get the groceries out of the car yeah. and come help them put them put away, away yeah. you know? And when dinner's done, you know, some nights it's my night to cook. Some nights is my night to clean. And so it's the same thing at the mission. Everybody has a responsibility every single day. So uh, whether you're in this program or that program, you still have a responsibility, whether it's sweeping the floor, wiping down the tables, cleaning the bathroom. Uh, the guys in our new life program are the guys that are committed to uh, helping out in the kitchen because they're, they're gonna be around a lot more, they're stable, they get trained for food preparation and food handling. And so uh, the guys from our new life program are the ones that predominantly help out in the kitchen in addition to the many volunteers that okay. come to us. All right, we're gonna cut away, take a break. You're listening to Chad Young from Salina Rescue Mission and you're watching Stories That Matter. Be right back. Welcome back to Stories That Matter. I'm your host, Doug Thompson, with my special guest, Chad Young, from the Salina Rescue Mission out of Salina, Kansas. If you're just getting involved in this program, you'll be able to catch a replay of it, but we'll kind of bring you up to speed. Uh, Chad is the executive director at the Salina Rescue Mission, the 76-bed facility, and feeding uh, about 43,000 meals a year. And that is absolutely tremendous because he's doing it without any funding from federal, state, or local. It's volunteers who are making the difference. And on that screen at different times, you will see the contact information. So it's not just contact for some money. If they have money, that's, boy, that's really needed. Yes. But if they have um, some clothing, mm -hmm. sometimes if they say, well, you know, the kid's gone on to school, they don't wear this, college or whatever. And so they have clothing and shoes. You're always in need of that, aren't you? Absolutely. We give out over 9,000 items of clothing a year. And if a guy gets a job and he needs something special to wear for his job, we're going to make sure he gets what he needs so he can go to work. Because after all, that's what our real goal is. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Chad, when we finished up the first segment, we had 
purposely held a question to go to the answer. And you, you and I know this, and we probably, I don't remember if we talked about it on air or we were talking uh, off screen, but um, things begin to happen when you're, when you're reaching for the Lord. And at some point in time, when you say, I give up, I can't do it, I can't mm -hmm. do it. And you know, it's like the person that's drowning in the water and flailing around and so forth. And once they <laughs> stop, the lifeguard can help. And yes. that's what the Lord does in this situation. Once you stop trying everything you've tried, turn it to me, surrender yes. it. So what was the question that we had for the audience that we saved? Well, what we were working through was, uh, how do you have a healthy relationship with a person when they're a sinner and I'm a sinner, we're still both gonna have troubles in life, we're still gonna both make mistakes. So how do we have a healthy relationship? And I think the Lord shows us exactly how we have a healthy relationship. It's through forgiveness. It's the only way it works. And so if we keep on counting each other's sins against each other, we're never gonna have a healthy relationship. And so at this point of our new life program, this is the point where we invite the families to come in and be a part of the recovery process and start helping the families to work through all the con uh, conflicts they've had, the resentments, the, the breach struggles. Breach of trust. Yeah, the breach of trust, absolutely. And so how do you go forward from there? How do you work through it? First, a lot of family members have been holding it in for so long that the first thing yeah. that they need to do when they get there is just confront the person and say, I felt like, I felt like, and you made me feel, and they have to go through and they have to get all that off their chest. Yeah. And part of that is we have to own it, say, I'm, I'm sorry I made you feel that way. Uh, I hope that you can forgive me, and I'm gonna do my best to learn from this and start making better decisions in the future. And you've gotta help people. We don't always forgive naturally. You know, it's something we have to be intentional about, mm -hmm. and we just have to work towards. And so that's a big part of the program is, is learning how to forgive ourselves and learning how to forgive others. And then, uh, and then uh, finally, our last part of that program is now that you've learned all this, what are you gonna do with it? Who, who, who's God created you to be yeah. out in the community? Because that's what they're getting ready to do is move back out into the community. So who are you gonna be now out in the community? Now that you've learned all this, who, who are you gonna be? What does God's purpose say for you as you go back out there and how can you live as a disciple of Christ and give God glory through how you choose to live in the community. We encourage you guys find a ministry, find a way to volunteer, find a way to start giving back to the community. God has helped me grow so much by me just volunteering and learning to give back. I, I thought I was helping others when I was doing that, but it turns out it, it helped me the yourself. most. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, I understand. And so I'm assuming if we went through some of this, you would say, well, I remember without using names of, of anybody, I remember this person that came in and boy, they were just, they were just crushed. They were just, they felt worthless in life. And over a period of time, you've seen that transition take place to where that person changed. And then pretty soon that person's family came around. Mm -hmm. And you can see it with their arms all folded. They were uh, very cautious because they'd been burned so many times yes. by that person with so many stories. And the person could look right in their eyes and say, I didn't do that. I did not do it. And they all knew better. Right. And that, but then you saw the families restored. How, how exciting is that? I tell you, it, it, it moves you. It moves you when you see families being restored. There was a gentleman uh, who came to us who had never paid child support, was never a part of his daughter's life, uh, uh, largely due to his drinking. And as he went through our program and started working and he started paying child support. And of course, uh, you know, the state started garnishing. Mm -hmm. They're taking half of his child support, and you know, he, he struggled with that. Uh, he didn't struggle with the responsibility part, but what he was struggling with, I'm paying child support and I don't even get to know my daughter. 
And so God had laid it on his heart to, man, I really want to start to know my daughter. And then over time, he wrote letters and and the first few letters back were were bad letters, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But eventually, uh, one day he got a letter back from his daughter along with a picture. And to see over the next six months after that, the healing that started to happen and take place. And this guy, he's he's living out in the community now, and he's a part of his daughter's life now. Uh, that it, It's just an overwhelming and amazing thing to be a part of. In those settings, do you sometimes have where people have been through the program and they've changed and turned their own lives around, surrendered it because they couldn't turn it around themselves and the Lord took over? Do, do some of them come back and volunteer? Absolutely. We we have several guys that have come back and volunteered. In fact, we've had several guys come back and start working at the mission. And and that's a pretty awesome thing too. So. That is. That is yeah. and 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 that's tremendous. I can I can imagine the excitement of seeing the families be able to connect again or the person who came in that was just absolutely nowhere gets out in the community, finds a job, begins to get it together. And uh, that, that's what it's all about. That's awesome. We got to cut away, take a break. You're watching Stories That Matter. Welcome back to Stories That Matter. I'm your host, Doug Thompson, with my special guest, um, uh, Chad Young. And of course, Chad, we're talking about a number of things, but you have a board of directors of nine people and yep. very little turnover in that, which tells me that they're really committed Absolutely, the, we've yeah. got a great board. Yeah, you 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 would have to. And uh, Chad, what do you what do you want the viewers who are watching this show? What do you want them to know about the people that come through and they're at the rock bottom? And what, what do you want them to know about these people? It's easy to give up on people and think that they'll never change. And the biggest thing I want to get across is people do change. There is nobody that is beyond God's grasp. Jesus Christ died on the cross, not to just uh, set some people free, but for all people, everyone who's willing to accept him. And though many have shoved Jesus and others away all their life, we've seen many a people near even the end of their life find Christ. And so we just want to encourage everyone, please don't give up on people. Keep on reaching out to them. Help us as we reach out to them. It does make a difference. And for that person who's struggling so much to know that someone still cares and someone wants to help them sometimes can make all the difference in the world. Yeah. Chad, thank you so much for being here. Really enjoyed it. Contact information's on the screen. Help out if you can. Thank you. Thanks for watching Stories That Matter.